We're still here at Teardown in Portland. This is Crowd Supply's huge, amazing festival of inventors and makers showing off their stuff. And I'm here with Mirdad, who is going to show us the Ubo Pod. Now, um, all I know about this is that it has a Raspberry Pi inside it. It incorporates some smart home stuff and some interactive AI. It also looks very pretty, but w where did this design come from and what's it for? Yay came from my personal frustration of building different projects on Raspberry Pi and uh, every time I made a project I had I struggled with building a good user interface for it so when I was putting projects in front of other people they had a trouble using my projects because they were not tech savvy and, and uh, so I wanted to offer like a polished interface for end users of applications of Raspberry Pi so that they can operate and use Raspberry Pi applications without having any technical knowledge. So basically UboPub brings common user interfaces like a graphical user interface, LED ring, audio speakers, and microphones for, for speak, speech interactions, voice interactions. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically you can uh, run uh, uh, popular Raspberry Pi applications like Home Assistant, so mm -hmm. you can turn this into a, a smart home hub. Yeah. Uh, so if you go to apps, you can install and run Docker containers. Mm -hmm. For example, you can install Home Assistant, which okay. I'm already running on this thing, uh -huh. and then uh, it will just give you, it's running on port 8123, for example, here, mm -hmm. and then you just go on your web browser and access the dashboard for Home Assistant. So sure, yeah. installing these popular applications, just a few clicks, mm -hmm. and you, don't, you do not uh, need to have any technical knowledge. You do not have to go in SSH or run, you know, terminal commands or anything. So, uh, so basically, it is kind of removes some barrier from uh, the end users of uh, developer applications mm -hmm. by offering them like a polished user experience. Absolutely, and um, uh, and the uh, the user interface, which the, the folks at home will have seen, will will show them a zoomed in version of that, is obviously only one aspect of this as well. Because as it mentions here, it um, it incorporates uh, conversational and vision AI. Is this also a choice that is sort of to do with making it easier for user interactions, a, a, another way to get at what's going on under the hood? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, voice interaction is another mode of uh, operation, right? It's, it's another form of UI. Yeah. Uh, and these are like you're still dialing in those experiences. For example, you can add a Google Corel AI accelerator for vision applications, and you can feed the uh, camera. Uh, streams into the device and process them uh, for vision applications and then we are also working with uh, for uh, implementing a, a voice experience out of the box so when you turn it on you can have uh, a conversational AI assistant and uh, down the road we can uh, dial those experiences into controlling individual applications mm -hmm. uh, but this is a development platform at the same time so it's fully open source mm -hmm. so there's nothing stopping developers to take the lead on some of these areas and uh, implement some of uh, some ideas of their own around these uh, conversational AI and also deploy their own applications and use the audio microphone speaker or all the peripherals that exist in the device. So this will come with basically uh, a range of uh, example applications and tutorials. So if somebody wants to fully customize this for their own use case, they can easily do that. Yeah. Absolutely. And um, uh, this is, as it says uh, on the sign here, it is uh, available on Crowd Supply. Um, so if people do want to uh, get in touch or to get uh, kind of back this, uh, where's the best place for them to look? So uh, it's right now in the pre-launch phase. So if, if uh, users go on crowdsupply.com, mm -hmm. in the pre-launch section, we are listed now. Mm -hmm. But in, in the very near future, in the next few months, we're going to launch the campaign. So make sure you sign up. Mm -hmm. Uh, on the pre-launch campaign and enter your email address and then we will notify you as soon as uh, the product is available for, for uh, uh, pre-purchase. Absolutely, and as always, uh, any links pertaining to the Ubo pod will be in the description of this video in our blog post. You'll be able to find them very easily. Um, and yeah, this is a really wonderful device. The one thing I wanted to ask actually just before we finish, you mentioned just before we started, it has this wonderful wood finish veneer yes. on the top. This came out of necessity, right? Yes, yes. So, uh, I really wanted to make something that looks like a consumer grade uh, product and is polished. Yeah. And uh, but at the same time, when you're 
shipping products uh, at lower volume, it's really difficult to invest in tooling and, and like getting that uh, polished look. Mm. So I was like 3D printing parts with FDM, and FDM finish is not really uh, appealing mm. for a product that you want to put in front of someone. And then I was thinking, like, how can I like circumvent this and mm. without like having to in invest in injection molding or things like that? So, so basically, I. Uh, came up with the idea of I found a uh, veneer walnut veneer on Amazon mm -hmm. it's like big sheets and I cut them with laser cutter yep. and then uh, this will go on the top of a plastic basically uh, it's still 3d printed but this is better finished than yep. FDM and uh, this will kind of this was giving me some time until I was ready to pull the plug on and uh, uh, injection molding and investing in tooling, mm -hmm. so yeah. it kind of like filled that gap, and then and then I kind of started to like it. It's like, yeah. oh, this is really nice, and people like the wood finish, and mm -hmm. so I kind of kept it as part of the product character. Absolutely, and I love when little uh, things of necessity become part of the finished product. It's a really nice thing. So yeah, Meredith, thank you very much for your time. Thank Cheers. you. Thank you.